what are we doing in the black community? The we number one consumer of a Mercedes Benz. Us. Us. Hmm. The number one consumer of a Gucci and a Louis Vuitton. Us. And they don't even advertise. Why is it that in the black community, we are always the number one consumer, but we're not the number one creators? So you just said it, the fact that there's consumers and creators. For so long, we assume success based on consumption. Mm. Welcome to another episode of Closing the Gap, uh, the truth about black wealth. Of course, I'm your host, Mr. Wilbert Hamilton, owner and founder of Hamilton Wealth Advisors. Uh, today, I got a special guest in the building. I um, mean, this gentleman go back probably, you know, 20 years now. And it made me think and reminisce like, man, I'm kind of, I'm getting up there in age. But, you know, he met me. I had a full head of hair. He had a hair that had waves everywhere. <laughs> now, you know, not so much. So, you know, but I appreciate having uh, Pastor Eddie Richardson here in the building today. And um, we definitely want to get back to sharing some great information. Um, of course, our goal here is to educate, um, enrich, and uplift, um, and help our community close the wealth gap by sharing that information. So, you know, I'm thankful to have him here. And this is the kickoff of our barbershop edition um, with uh, over the next, you know, three months we're gonna have several barbers in and you know telling their stories that all have different you know backgrounds and um, dreams goals and objectives and we want them to share their life and their passion with you and you know because all of them have a different take and you know we all believe that our you know gifts make room for us and this is where we're gonna um, get into depth of talking about how you know finding your passion and finding your gift um, it can take you to another level so I'm grateful to have my man Eddie here today yes, we're sir. gonna chop it up like good folks and you know kind of jump right into it man so you know just tell me a little bit about yourself I know you kind of you know from here the Miles graduate um, member of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated, right. you know, yes, the next greatest fraternity in the United <laughs> States of America, you know. A great man told me back in the day, he said, help, he said, man, you know, there's only two real fraternities, both of them started in 1911. So I, you know, I kind of stick with that. Stick with it, yeah. um, so, you know, just kind of jumping into it. So, you know, tell me kind of where you got started and how you got into becoming a barber and, you know, kind of where things go. All right, yeah, man, thank you for having me, brother. You yes, know, sir. I definitely appreciate the relationship over the years. Um, so I came up here to Birmingham uh, from Linden, Alabama in 1993 and uh, started as a student at Miles College. And um, I was cutting hair back home, but uh, didn't really, my father was uh, introduced me to being an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. uh, and but I didn't really see it in full like he did. But uh, after I graduated, I um, started working in a barbershop up here in the city. And, um, and that's how, of course, I met you, mm -hmm. uh, as you said, with a full head of hair <laughs> as a younger, younger person. Uh, and I've been cutting hair ever since. So it, it all started from home. Uh, my father always had some type of business venture that he was doing, some type of work that he would have my brothers and I doing with him. Uh, and my grandmother was instrumental in that as well. Um, then from also being a pastor now, uh, that also was ingrained from the home as well. Uh, my grandmother was pastor, <laughs> my dad pastor, uncle, aunts, you know, and so it just, yeah, it just came down the line. So the barbering, uh, he and my mother used to cut my hair uh, and cut my brother's hair. My mother, she used to uh, do hair, you know, so that was ingrained okay. in the bloodline and then pastoring ingrained in the bloodline. So it all started from home, you know, that, you know, that's where I got that, that foundation. That foundation, that, that foundation kind of led you into a passion and, you know, and a purpose. And obviously you, you were a man who wear many hats, obviously. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. you know, if you could tell me what your, what you feel like your passion and purpose is, what would you say? Um, passionate about helping people. Uh, and that passion of helping people is exercised through the barbershop, um, you know, being around more people, being able to um, speak to them, listen to them there. Uh, I often tell people that the barbershop and that mat that I stand on, that's my first pulpit, mm -hmm. right? Because that's where I do most of my preaching. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I only go to church once or twice during the week, mm -hmm. but I'm at the barbershop five to six days a week and I see more people in and out uh, and over the years. So. Um, so that's my passion is, is helping people and I'm able to listen to them, share with them some godly wisdom, um, you know, and I try to stay away from telling them what I would do, you know, because everybody has, has their own uh, thought process or, or ideas personally. Mm -hmm. But uh, I try to stick to 
staying foundationally in the word of God with any type of advice that I give. Okay. Well, what's happening is, when did that, I guess, that, that passion start burning in you to kind of lean more over into the pulpit? I know you say it was kind of in you and always there. And, um, you know, I've, like I said, I've known you going back to when I was in college, obviously yeah, playing ball right. and right. had that nice full head of sick hair. <laughs> um, you know, but you weren't pastoring then, you know. Right. So, you know, how did that transition happen? What led to that change? I know it's probably just gradual over time. And, you know, what made you or what happened in your life to make you make that transition? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, well, I was, you know, I got married and as a wife, started having kids, and then I I got sick. And in the midst of that, that time of sickness was really a come to Jesus moment. Uh, and that during that time, I had to sit down and be quiet. You know, I had to pray, I had to listen more. And that was when I realized that, okay, God is calling you to your ministry. Uh, and and that's when I answered my call to preach. It's during that time of, of ailment, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I've, I've learned that oftentimes you don't take the time to sit down and listen to God, mm -hmm. that God will take the time to sit you down so that you can hear. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and, so, um, and so if I have any advice and what I try to do is try to spend more time with mm -hmm. listening to God, you know, not just praying and telling God what I desire, mm -hmm. but uh, sitting down and listening and asking God, God, what is it that you desire mm -hmm. of me? And so that that's where what got me into um, into pastoring and preaching. Yeah, and I feel like, I mean, that's key. I mean, it, it's kind of, you know, crazy that, you know, we have, you know, different people on and, you know, the one key that, you know, we always hear come back out is that, you know, you have a servant's heart. You know, it's about ministering to people. It's about being a blessing to others. And, you know, I feel like, you know, for me, I think that's the foundation of what makes people successful. I think if you have a heart for others and you have a heart for whether it's a person sitting in your barber chair or your congregation in the pulpit, I mean, in the, in the church that you're speaking to while you're in the pulpit, you know, it's all from a servant's heart and you saying, look, I want to sit down and you have to listen and hear God. And I think we've all been at that place at various points in time when, you know, if you don't sit down and listen, he'll sit you down. That's right. And, you know, sometimes he'll slow you down and want to like you caught a crank, you know, <laughs> just so you got to sit still and yeah. say, you know what, Lord, what am I missing? What am I not hearing that I need to hear? And one thing, if you ask and he'll answer, yeah. um, but you got to sit still and be quiet. And I think that's the greatest thing that, you know, you know, all of us can take from, you know, I think this whole COVID pandemic, what we've had, I think, yeah. you know, God is trying to show the world. I think, you know, you can sit down and listen. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, we'll be right back at your next episode. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to Closing the Gap, the truth about black wealth. Of course, I'm here picking back up my man, Mr. Eddie Richardson, uh, Pastor Richardson. Um, you know, you know, Ed, I know, I've known you a long time now. Yeah. And like I said, I know you're a man that wears many hats. And, you know, you have a lot of responsibilities. I mean, you take pride in what you do, whether it's being a barber, whether it's being a pastor. So tell me, how hard is it, you know, to balance all of those, you know, multiple entities at one time? Of course, because being a husband is a full-time job. Being a father's a full-time job, being a barber's a full-time job, and then being a pastor's a full-time job as well. So how are you able to manage, you know, all of those things and all those multiple streams of income? Uh, I can't take any credit uh, <laughs> for it. it. It's all the grace of God, mm -hmm. uh, honestly. Uh, and, and although I'm a pastor, I don't, I don't say that tongue in cheek. I mean, it, it really is the grace and mercy of God that allows me to be able to balance myself. Um, and that's what enables me not to allow any of it to stress me. Uh, as you said, being a, a husband, father, full-time barber, pastor, a uh, few business ventures outside of those things. Um, it's taking the time, as I said earlier, praying, listening to God, spending that time to get that focus, uh, and then taking a piece of paper, writing down what needs to be done so that it keeps me organized and it takes the, those things off of my mind in a sense 
right, by having them on paper and then like a checklist. Mm -hmm. And so when I had those things organized there, then on my daily routine, okay, I know on today, I have to do this, I have to do this, my wife wants to do this, my children have to do this, um, I have these church responsibilities, I have this many clients at the barbershop, I, need, I have these many calls that I need to make during the day. And so the more time that I spend with God early and then write a list out, the easier the day goes. Write it down and make it plain. And write it down and make it plain. That's that scripture. There yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, you know, and, and with that, I know how hard it is to, you know, to handle all of those things, and obviously you do it with, you know, make it look like you're doing it with ease, you know, but I understand and know it's not easy. So tell me, I mean, being a, like I say, barber full-time, you know, and now obviously a pastor full-time and having those multiple ventures, what led you into those other ventures, or how did you kind of come about um, making those transitions or deciding to take those steps? Hmm. As I said, you know, the entrepreneurial spirit was um, already placed inside of me uh, with my family, with, with my grandmother, my father, you know, and then my mother would always call me as I was in college and make sure that uh, I was staying on the right track mm -hmm. and doing what I was trying to do. And so being able to re reach back on those things that I was taught early mm -hmm. helped me to be able to move forward and figure out different things that were invested in me and then slowing down and taking those into account made me realize that, okay, these are some things that I can do in addition to what I'm doing because they are things that I've already been taught or introduced to, mm -hmm. right? And so also sitting down after speaking to God, thinking about the things that I was taught early, then sitting down with my wife and praying with her. And then we sat down wrote out a few things that God has spoke to her about and spoke to me about and from us putting those things down on paper then we said okay what's first All right so what what does God desire us to do first okay and once we do did that then that led us into the next thing it's almost like a domino effect mm -hmm. really it is it, God desires me to sit down with him and then from there will establish what needs to be done first. He's establishing the order. Yes, he's establishing the order. And then once I receive the order, and then my wife, me and my wife pray and we agree, then we see that, okay, things were able to move swiftly. Now, I'm not saying that I've always had that. <laughs> not at all, right? You know, but this is something that we have acquired over time mm -hmm. with um, being humble. You know, and that's that's the main thing for me is removing all ego uh, and staying humble, and that's where that's where listening comes in. Mm -hmm. Because listening to God helps me be able to listen to my wife. Mm -hmm. It helps me be able to listen to my children. It helps me be able to listen to you when you come in the barber shop or other clients when they come in the shop. It it helps me be able to listen to the church members, mm -hmm. right? And, and from all of that, God is speaking some things to us. And so it helps me be able to do all of the, wear all of the other hats and, and be able to have multiple streams of income by just being patient and being one with God and one with my family. Well, you know, one of the biggest things that I take from that is just, you know, patience and order. You know, organization is key. It's one thing we, you know, I'm, I'm big about it. And, you know, we talk about it, you know, from time to time in the barbershop. And, of course, there's a craze right now where everybody wants to wear multiple hats and be a jack of all trade and master of none. But you've actually mastered two areas first. You are a master barber first. And then are you a trained, going to seminary, you know, graduated seminary, and now a pastor as well. So you've actually mastered two areas that are now allowing you and taught you order and discipline that's helped to create, you know, and give your gifts to be able to make room for you. Yes. So I feel like, you know, if you didn't have that order and patience, you didn't reach back into those foundational things that you had that have taught you to kind of do things at a certain pace and not to put the cart before the horse, sit down, listening to God, like you said, talking to your wife, you know, hearing what she has to say and y'all coming upon agreement. I heard that was the big thing is that there's some agreement that took place before you started to move forward. Now you're able to move forward on one accord 
which allows you to be able to move a lot more freely and a lot more confidently. And uh, obviously, you know, being married, I mean, that, that's the key thing. You know, you want to be on one accord with your wife and make sure that you are both ahead yeah. in the right direction. And, you know, the fact that you are taking those things and your gifts have allowed and made room for you in a way where you're not sacrificing being a barber. You're not sacrificing your congregation to chase other entities. All too often, I feel like people are, they're like a dog chasing his tail. You know, they're, they're going around in circles but the one thing that they should be focusing on that's going to make room for them, they're actually ignoring. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like me being a financial advisor. If all of a sudden I have four other opportunities on the table and I'm not focused on being a financial advisor anymore, I've allowed to be myself to become distracted from that and I'm chasing these other areas. Well, now this is going to suffer. Mm -hmm. My lack of productivity here and this is what I'm supposed to be focused on that makes room for everything else. And, and the fact that you've mastered that, I mean, is the key and something we all need to take into account. See you back in a minute.